What's up guys, Justin here. Got another splurge I wanna to talk to you guys about regarding our real estate stuff. This one's more directed towards agents. There's been a couple updates that actually go into effect April 1st. They're actually, I think they're usable now, but our Trek overlord said like after April 1st, that's the only contract that licensed salespersons are supposed to use moving forward. So if you're my brokerage, you guys better be watching this thing. If you guys are worth your salt and you're at some other brokerage, you probably should pay attention to this as well. There are some, some key changes, some extra disclosures. Most of it is because people keep getting into squabbles and troubles and, and, and lacking disclosures and not doing the right things when they're supposed to. And, you know, Trek thought they got to dumb it down a little bit more so that people will continue to, you know, to try to lower the percentages of incidents around those surrounding things. And actually there's, there's some emergence of technologies coming around, namely like your nest, your net, like your smart, smart technology that's happening around the house. There's been some incidents where, and it's kind of creepy where seller leaves their technology in the, in the freaking house. And they got, they got freaking cameras around the house. They close on the home and they forget to just turn off their, turn off their, um, their subscription or someone never disconnects them. And they got some creepy footage and it, ca it caused a whole bunch of situations. So much so that it was definitely needed to be articulated in the new next, next generation of this contract. So it's about time for that shit. Let's, um, I think this, this video, we probably need to get into a screen share so I can show you what the changes are. There's a, there's a, there's a version of the changes of the request of changes that it highlights exactly what needs to happen. From what I remember, I think it was like seven paragraphs or something like that. Let's, uh, let's jump into that and we'll, we'll walk you through that right now. So let's, let's do that right now. Only a few paragraphs. I'm going to try to burn through this as quickly as possible. I don't want to bore you guys. Um, there is a really good link. I'll make sure to put this in the description. This, uh, shows you, shows you and highlights what they deleted, what did they added to the new contract. As a reminder, this new contract is 2015 that that's how they mark it and it'll actually tell you when they last published it so that's the date and at the bottom of every page you'll see the actual track number so this is the 15th iteration i believe that's what they the best 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 way to describe it you know the best way to describe it so um let's uh let's jump into it blue is all the things they added reds all the things they deleted uh, property, they're just adding property into the uh, parentheses. Accessories, they talk about controls. This will get articulated in a further, uh, articulated further down in the contract in a few places. Uh, controls include sellers' transferable rights, so the software applications used to access and control improvements, accessories, and hardware solely to and used solely to control the improvements and their accessories. This is related to uh, some of the new tech that's coming out. Let's talk about it further down in the contract. Paragraph four, this is kind of important. This used to be the license holder disclosure. So let me show you on the right hand side. This is the old contract. This is the new contract. So paragraph four used to be the license holder disclosure. They moved that to a different section. 2015 or um, in the 2015 contract, they now created this as the leases section, people screwed up on it enough times that they had to articulate it a little bit more. It's not just talking about residential leases. And it's talking about any kind of leases. Uh, mineral rights is a very notable one. Uh, residential leases, fixture leases, this is kind of related to this controls crap. Um, these nest there's so many kind of like these Internet of Things, these IoT subscriptions. And I believe there was a situation where somebody had, you know, this Internet service where they had the webcams in the house and they never turned off the subscription. 
and the new buyers bought the house and the sellers never turned it off and they had access to some very sensitive and um, maybe embarrassing videos of the buyers and it turned into a situation that nobody wants to be involved with and Trek thought it was a good idea that they included in the lease. Let's just put it like that. Okay, so residential leases, we talked about that. This used to be in a, a section further down in the old contract. Fixture leases, just talked about it. Natural resource lease. I'm actually in a situation where I'm trying to close on a property and the mineral mineral rights were leased out to Exxon Mobil 30, 40 years ago. And if I was buying from a normal seller, I bought it from a, I was buying a foreclosure, but they, they you know, banks and uh, REO companies think they're, you know, they, they're special a lot of times and they want to try to not use the Trek contract. It's really good that Trek Trek does really does a good job to try to be neutral. You want to try to use a Trek contract whenever you can. If I was using a Trek contract, the new Trek contract, I would have ideally been disclosed that there were these natural resource leases. This articulates, at least gives an opportunity for the seller to disclose that there are natural resource leases and that I, in my situation, I didn't have any rights to the mineral rights to the property that I was trying to purchase. Let's keep going. License holder disclosure. I was just telling you guys that got deleted. Here's the, let me go on to the right. That's what it used to look like. So that's moved further down in the contract. Paragraph five also got modified pretty heavily. Paragraph five used to be just earnest money. Now the option period paragraph got combined with the earnest money. So enough people screwed this up that they're just trying to dumb this section down as much as possible and they're telling you guys all right option period earnest money they're not the same thing but you now in the new contracts they're all going to the title company and they're going to manage it for you guys because enough of you guys screwed it up and created enough of a hullabaloo for everybody that this is how it's going to be moving forward. So this is this is kind of important, agents. So pay attention to this. It's all following similar conventions. It has to be sent within three days. You get like the situation where if the last day is on a Saturday, Sunday, or a holiday, it automatically goes to the next regular business day for the most part. If you don't turn it in in time, you basically are in default. So get your option money and earnest money. You can you could turn them in separately. Get them into the title company as quickly as possible. Okay. So this this whole section replaces the old earnest money uh, paragraph. And that's look how short it used to be. Mind you, it's it's combining the the option period section too, which is yeah, it's kind of lengthy, but even together it's still even more. But let's keep going. Everything still looks the same. Yada, yada, yada. Let's keep going. Brokers and sales agents. So this actually is where they moved the old licensure disclosure disclosure to paragraph eight. In addition to making the disclosure that this contract has nothing to do with the commission obligations between the listing broker and the buyer's broker okay so people screwed up on that crap all the time but uh, let we can talk about it further down they make some extra disclosures further down in the in the updated contract but let, let's get to it later possession possession is still the same you get the options between closing and funding and according to a residential lease they delete this leases paragraph let's go to let's, let's try to find it so this lease is, so if you look, so I'm on the old contract here. This is the leases paragraph. If you look at the new contract of paragraph 10, let's try to find it. Leases is completely deleted. So this has all actually been deleted. That's actually slightly different than this draft that was created in October of last year. This is actually the November iteration 
this is the final version. So all of the leases paragraph has been com completely removed. This is extra language about the smart devices. If it's not getting assigned, you need to remove it and terminate any subscriptions that you have. That's what that stuff is saying. I don't know what to tell you guys. If you have any subscriptions on the house, get, turn them off, move on, get your get your fixtures out of there if you're if they're not getting assigned to the new owners. Paragraph 18 escrow this section let's let's read this real quick. Escrow agent may require disbursement main connection with this contract to be conditioned. So this is actually um, a very the special language here, meaning the title company can condition dispersing the funds for any reason, depending on specifically depending on not for any reason, but if if the funds don't come in in an acceptable manner. So, like if you turn in if the if the escrow funds, the earnest money, and the uh, option fee comes in in a regular check. They can withhold dispersing the funds because it didn't come in in an acceptable manner to the title company. Okay, most title companies will require you to turn in your funds in either cashier's check or money order, and so that that's what that's kind of getting at right there. Paragraph 18b. This is just kind of expanding the authority and rights of what the title company can do. Authorized expenses is just expanding what they can do to the earnest money and if they have to deduct funds or change or, or Do anything and adjust the amounts that need to be dispersed to whoever they can do so Paragraph 21 that's obviously self-explanatory paragraph 22. These are actually two new addendums We can talk about those at a later date the old paragraph 23 has been deleted and going back to what I was telling you guys about Earlier, that was that's 2014. Old paragraph 23 was the termination option paragraph. That all has been combined where the earnest money was. So this is no longer needed. This is now the new paragraph 23. And this is actually the last paragraph I wanted to talk to you guys about. If I need to reiterate to you guys for the millionth time, this contract is not, it's not proof that you guys are supposed to be paid X percent or whatnot. Okay. So on the old contract, so I'm looking on 2014 on the right side, there was this nice little disclosure. Honestly, it was just a courtesy for agents to try to remind the listing broker that they're supposed to be paid X percent or some flat fee to the cooperating broker. They reworded it, you can look over here, to reemphasize that it's just a disclosure. Disclosure, pursuant to a previous separate agreement, such as MLS offer of compensation or other agreement between brokers, listing broker has agreed to pay the other, uh, other broker a fee of blank. This disclosure here does not, it's not an enforceable clause. Um, if you're a part of the MLS, and if both parties are a part of the MLS, the local board, where the the, the transaction or the, the, the property was posted in, that MLS listing is part of the broker to broker agreement because we're a part of we're all part of the board of realtors of that local association. There is we all agree that we're supposed to pay each other whatever we advertise in the MLS listing. If you're not a part of the Board of Realtors of that local association, there is no broker-to-broker -broker agreement in place. And I try to remind my people, if you're trying to do a transaction in a board that we're not affiliated with, there's no broker-to-broker -broker agreement in place. And you honestly, like if you're trying to show the property, prior to showing the property is when you probably need to get the broker-to-broker -broker a separate broker to broker agreement in place. Otherwise, this is not enforceable. This is just a courtesy. And so they're not obligated to pay you guys. And I think that's it, y'all. Those are the changes. Uh, the biggest ones are, if 
we're if I'm trying to review this real quickly, the leases section, they combine earnest money and option period. Um, they they're adding this language about some of the new internet technology and the cameras and recording equipment that are and nest cams and that's in these new homes nowadays. It's it's pretty straightforward. They you know they're moving things around. They rearranged it to try to make some more sense in this new business. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. This is uh, Justin Martinez. I'm the broker for Texas Ally and. Um, yeah, have a good evening.